Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 15 of the Trivia 10. We are now in the fourth quarter of the season as we rear towards the conclusion, finding out who's going to make the playoffs. Kevin, back from Season 1, did not make the playoffs in Season 1. How are you feeling coming into Season 2, bringing different energy? You've been studying up. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Um, you know, I didn't do too terribly last time. I'm more still stumped up on the guest the cast. It's kind of something that's been haunting me for a while, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. Well, to, well looking for redemption. Looking yeah. for redemption. Yes. Make sure you're subscribed. Every Tuesday and Friday, we're uploading new episodes, and we're almost there at the playoffs. Here's the current leaderboards right now. Sophie, Ethan, and Alex are all still hoping someone's going to get below them. Alex is at the point of desperation, going to need quite a few people below him if he wants to lock into the playoffs, as we only have a few episodes left. we got plenty of people already locked in. If the season ended today, Anthony and Cam would be in a wild card round to determine that 16 seed. But if anyone gets below them, then they're both going to be vaulted into the playoffs. So we'll see where Kevin lands. If he's going to lock into that green, if he's going to have to wait a few weeks to find out. Yeah, let's it's go funny. I joked. In. It's funny. I joked with Alex about getting a 30, and he. I now I know why he was like for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he 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 did not do great. And he's been every week he's been watching these episodes hoping that people are going to get below him to give him a shot at redemption to make the playoffs. But we'll see if that's going to happen. But let's go ahead and dive in. Obviously, it. we are going to start with the multiple choice questions. So question number one. In Bruges takes place in Bruges. But what country is Bruges in? I believe that is and that it is oh, multiple sorry, choice. Sorry. Yeah. Multiple choice. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could have just got it off the rip. You got Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, Denmark. I believe it's Belgium. Your belief is correct. Five points. Bruges, Belgium is correct. The tongue twister of a question. Going on to question number two now, another multiple choice. Chris Pr Chris Pratt plays Scott Hatterberg in Moneyball, but what position is he? Is he a right fielder, a first baseman, a left fielder, or a second baseman? It's funny you do this because it could have been like a trick question, but you didn't put the other position that he was playing before they switched him. Mm -hmm. He plays first base. Mm -hmm. Correct. He was first base and catcher. Um, I can't remember. Did they have him play a different position in the movie, or was it just first base and catcher? He was just first base. So okay. Just first base, gotcha. yeah. Because Scott Hatterberg obviously is a real-life person. He played both first base and catcher, but I was like, yeah. I'm not going to put both on here. Mainly his position throughout his career was first base. But yeah, obviously yeah. Moneyball's a movie, but Scott Hatterberg, very much a real person. First very base much. And boy, boy, was. <laughs> Ten points, perfect so far through the go. first two. Going on to the general trivia questions now. What is the team name of the Globo Gym Dodgeball team in Dodgeball, a true underdog story? Uh, it is the Purple Cobras. The Purple Cobras are correct. Ten points. You still maintain being perfect through the first three. Going on to question number four now. What title is given to the winner of the dance competition in Midsummer? Oh, my God. Uh, it is the May Queen. The May Queen is correct. Still perfect. Already at 30 points, so... Going to need a colossal fall off if you're going to be under Alex at this point, but we'll see. And stranger things have happened before. 2023's Roadhouse has Jake Gyllenhaal clean up a bar in the Florida Keys, but in 1989's Roadhouse, what state is Patrick Swayze sent to to clean up the double deuce? Mm, you may have gotten me on this one. Was it? Are you trying to trick me here? What? I don't remember if it was a shot for shit. Like, a shot for shot remake as far as like they do it at the same it's not it wasn't in the was it in the florida Key? i watched the original like a couple months ago before the i feel like you're trying to trick me here oh man i told myself i would not rush the second time because i feel like i rushed a but little you bit flew through the time. first four so yeah take your time for sure yeah now. i feel like you know give myself a second to think I don't really have a, a guess, so I'm just going to hope that you're possibly trying to make me. I want to say like Miss, it Miss, like Mississippi or something. It's like a, it's a, it's definitely a swamp area. The fight that he has with the guy, where he's like, you know, I f people like you. It was like a swampy area, so it definitely wasn't like it's in the south. So at least I know that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that you're. Messing with me, maybe? I'm going to go with Florida. I was not messing with you, but you are right. It is very much in the south and a swampy <sighs> area. And you had the miss right, but it's Missouri. Missouri. Okay. Mississippi. Okay. So no points. Your first stumble today, but you still have 
a lot of the quiz left to go. We're at the halfway point now, and you're at 30 points. Now going on to the matching game portion of the quiz. First, we have the box office edition, and we have Super Bad, No Hard Feelings, and Bullet Train. And we have a budget of 20 million that made 170 million, budget of 45 million that made 87 million, and a budget of 85 million that made 239 million. Match them up. Um, I have a little bit of a notepad. That's okay. So I can like kind of like yep, go for it. Figure it out. So, all right. So, obviously, I think off the bat, just giving you my thought process, Mm -hmm. I think number two is no hard feelings because it actually was it? No, it definitely didn't do two hundred and thirty nine. Bullet Train. I'm thinking the budget is the most because you got Brad Pitt, Aaron Taylor, Aaron Taylor uh, Johnson. You know, Ryan even Ryan Reynolds makes a cameo. Like you got a stacked cast of people in that movie. So I'm thinking, and it's obviously an action movie, so they need the budget. Um, no Hard Feelings didn't, it, it made good money for like comedies nowadays, but like it didn't make like a ton of money. I want to say that's number two. Let me think of this. Thinking Super Bad's number one. Uh, because back in those days, this comedies made good money. Uh, so I'm going to go one being Super Bad. I'm going to go with that they're in order one two three mm-hmm. one two three from left to right yeah i'm gonna go one super bad two no hard feelings three uh bullet train well that is perfectly done perfectly done i feel like bullet train was kind of the the one you could lock in first like you said with the higher budget and then the other two were kind of which one were you thinking made more money but yeah mm-hmm. perfectly done all three of them correct you have 45 points now so you're officially not going to be in last place this season already <laughs> yes but you still have work to do if you want to make it into the playoffs. So on to the next matching game here, we got rotten tomatoes edition. And this one, we got hot rod, happy Gilmore knocked up. So three comedies and we got a 39 critics, 64 audience, 62 critics, 85 audience and 89 critics, 83 audience. This is tough. Oh my goodness. Um, wow. You may get me on this one. Um, okay. Let me think here. Okay, so I'm trying to – I came in with the strategy of, like, looking at the audience score. You know, if I if I get stumped up, look at, like, how many ratings there are. But they all have the same amount of ratings, so I can't really do that. Um, shout out Josiah with that little cheat mm-hmm. sheet there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm trying to figure out what the critics would like the least. I, I, I'm going to have to guess it's a hot rod, honestly, because Happy Gilmore just has that following of being, you know – at one of Adam Sandler's funniest movies, Knocked Up. I feel like Knocked Up could be a little more split on the critics there. Or maybe they loved it. Who knows? Um, I'm thinking Hot Rod being number one because simply because the critics, I feel like the I love Hot Rod so much, but I feel like the critics – would most of them would hate it because it's really stupid um and not a ton of people still have seen it so i'm thinking the 119 reviews that's not really like a critics type of movie where they're going to want to watch a lot of them are going to watch it i'm gonna go i'm gonna go hot rod number one because i feel like 55 reviewers more than 55 reviewers would have reviewed knocked up because it came out like late 2000s Versus Happy Gilmore would have less because it came out in the 90s. I'm going to go one, two, three again. So one hot rod, two Happy Gilmore, three knocked up left to right. Yeah. Perfectly done once again. Perfectly done. 15 points. I feel like you initially had knocked up and Happy Gilmore flipped, but you ended up switching them back. Yeah, Hot Rod, the outlier, kind of the lowest on critics. But comedies in general, I feel like, are very tough to kind of know where what they're going to be rated. It's just a hard genre to peg where people are going to land. But, yep, 15 points, perfectly done in the two matching games. So you're doing great right now. You're at 60 points at this point. Um, Still not locked in the playoffs. You're going to need 10 more points, but you still have three questions left to grab those 10 points. But still sitting in a good spot. There we go. Next question, there's going to be two correct answers for this question. You're going to get zero points, 10 points, or 20 points based on how well you can do. And the question is, in Talladega Nights, or in Tal- Talladega Nights of Ricky Bobby, Ricky prays at dinner thanking his sponsors. Finish this quote. We thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of Domino's, blank, and the always delicious blank. 
man. Do I have to tell you what positions they're in, or can I just give you the two? No, if you get the two correct, it doesn't matter if it's as long as one, yeah, just as long as it's one of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, one of them I'm almost a thousand percent certain is KFC, and then I'm trying to think of what's on the table. God, I used to watch this movie so much. I haven't watched it in a while. Um. It's like K. It's, I'm just thinking like junk food, like fast food places. I I remember him saying this line and everything. Thank you so much. For that. And always delicious KFC. Yeah, I, I'm almost positive that that's the second one. Um, Domino's. What would also be on the table? Okay, so it's not another pizza place. Is it Taco Bell and KFC? Taco Bell and KFC are the two you're going to go with? Mm-hmm. The, the correct answer is Taco Bell and KFC. Oh, KFC was the first one, then Taco Bell the second one. <clears throat> Perfectly done. You are now locked into the playoffs at 80 points, but we're going to see just how high you can go now with the Ride the Buzz and Gets the Cast to the toughest question of the season coming up next. But you can take a sigh of relief at this point. You are in the playoffs. Going to Ride the Bus now, which has been the toughest one of the season. First movie we're going to give you is... X at a 3.4 average letterbox rating. And you're going to tell me if this next movie is rated higher or lower on average. And that is the 40 year old virgin. Is that above or below a 3.4? Um, I mean, I didn't like X. I was like the few, like few people that really disliked X. I still haven't even seen Pearl. Pretty excited for Maxine though. Um, 40 year old virgin. I feel like, you know, like kind of a, the forgotten comedy of the 2000s. But I think a lot of people like it, but I do think it's probably less than a 3.4. It's probably like a 3.3 or 3.2. I'm going to go lower. Lower is correct. So you got five points. And the next movie you're going to say is higher or lower than 3.3 is Ready Player One. Oh, my God. This is like the most divisive. This is like such a divisive movie. I love this movie so much, but like so many people hate it. Like there's a lot of half stars and one stars, especially people that like vehemently talk about like the book and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going to say it's, it shouldn't be. I'm going to say it's, I'm going to say it's actually lower than a 3.3. It is lower than a 3.3. Still on the bus. Going on to the next one now. Next movie is Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Is that above or below a (laughs) 3.2? You had to do this to me. Oh, This is a five star for me. Um, This is like me and my wife's favorite movie. Um, We actually even like went like... Went to Hawaii a couple months, a couple years ago, and stayed at the resort they filmed this movie in. Um, nice, but I think it's. Would you go lower again? I don't know if you'd go lower again, but maybe you're trying to stump me. I'm gonna go. I think it's like a three point one. I'm gonna go lower again. It is actually higher, although I do have the text on red on accent, but it is higher. I just verified 3.3 is right. So still you got halfway through, which is further than a lot of people do get on the ride the bus. So higher would have been the right answer. And next we had another dodgeball question, which was actually lower than forgetting Sarah Marshall. So 10 points Mm -hmm. is what you get for ride the bus. You're at 90 points now going into the guest cast. The question that stumped you up last season. We'll see how just how high you can soar on these points here this season. Come on. So one by one, I'm going to reveal, reveal cast members of a movie. You got to tell me what movie it is. And the first character I'm going to be revealing is Seth Rogen, who I believe, based on your letterbox stats, was your number one watched actor, I think, or in terms of what you've logged, at least. Yeah, it's it's not my most. I, I need to, like I've told you before, I need to get better at my letterbox. There's mm-hmm. so many movies I have watched over the years. I just have not. Mm-hmm. I need to backlog. I need to like go back and do all yeah. that. You still um, have plenty, plenty, plenty of Seth Rogen, though, so. Oh yeah, of course. Um, especially since I love those that era of two thousands comedies. He's, he's in like everything. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you can go every anywhere. You can go knocked up. You can go. This is the end. You can go Pineapple Express. 
you can go I'm trying to think of what I have logged. Um, but I'm trying to think also it's first, so it's probably an ensemble cast member. Usually you start with that. I'm trying to think what does he have the least amount of screen time in. So I'm not thinking it's not knocked up. I am going to go shot in the dark. I'm going to go this is the end. This is the end is not correct. Mm, not okay. correct. Going on to the next one now. Paul Dano. It was, No. Would you? Dumb money? No. I feel like Paul Dano would be first for that movie, but there's also a ton of other people. Nick Swartz and a ton of other big people in that movie. I'm trying to think. Okay. What do I have logged? What have I seen? At least recently, maybe. I'm gonna go. Ah, oh, man, you're gonna get me again, aren't you? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Dumb money. Dumb money is incorrect. <sighs> going on to the next cast member, Michelle Williams. Oh my God, you're gonna get me again on this. So Seth Rogen, Paul Dano, Michelle Williams. At least I've already made the playoffs. So I can relax. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Let me think about this. Um, okay. I'm just going to list off. Think about Seth Rogen movies. Okay. Paul Dano is not in Pineapple Express. He's not in Superbad. He's not in Knocked Up. Neither is Michelle Williams in any of those movies. Is it, It's got to be like a something that I'm like blanking on. That's like Seth Rogen is in like that's a... Maybe a more serious of a role. Um, I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna go. Don't look up. It is not. Don't look up. The next cast member, Gabriel Labelle. Oh my God! Um, the Fablemans. It is the Fablemans. So the way I was going, which it worked out well, was Seth Rogen. Obviously, you've, you've, I think you've logged like twenty-ish films of his. So yeah. first one, it's really just like matter of pulling a random dart out of the air but then paul dano obviously was in dumb money and the fablemans together with them so i was hoping i was thinking you could get it on the third because it's like 50 50 I, I, was hoping, don't, I was hoping uh dumb money is gonna be in your head more than fablemans which it was but you got 10 points still hey. so you got, which means you end up at 100 points now so with 100 points that means you're going to be tied for third place with byron and george so very much in the playoffs so we're gonna have to see as the next couple of weeks go by where the seating's all going to land and who's going to be facing who in the first round. But that means Alex is one week closer to officially hitting that red and same with Ethan and Sophie and Anthony and Cam are, are still right now looking at a wild card unless someone can get below them and push them both into the green. But 100 points, yeah. big improvement from last season. How you feeling? I feel great. Again, I'm kind of pissed about I guess the cast it's like that. It's gonna like haunt me forever. Both both outings are just not good. And that's usually my bread and butter too, is like knowing like filmographies of people. And that's all my videos I make on like TikTok. And it's like, God, mm -hmm. that's I always feel so confident going into that last one. Like, easy. I got mm -hmm. this. Like you still well, had no pressure this time because you yes. you already had locked in the playoffs at that point. And you, but you did boil and ride the bus. You only slipped up on the roadhouse question. Um, you got both matching games perfect. You got the two answers perfect. So really a near flawless performance um, and Thank got you. you in the triple digits. So 100 points. We'll be seeing you again in the playoffs when we ramp that up in a, about a month and a half from now. But Kevin, great work. We will be seeing you again this season. And make sure you're subscribed every Tuesday and Friday. We're going to be doing new episodes as we finish out that season. And we only have a couple episodes to go to find out what these playoffs officially are going to look like. So we will see you in the next one. Amazing. Peace. Thank you so much, Tyler.